Good morning. Thank you for watching. This is, uh, I suppose, episode three of a series on politics and government. Um, so I think I've worked through most of the peripherals that I felt like I needed to work through to get to this point. Um, so what I want to say is that if our system is so deeply broken that we can no longer uh, truly have authority in it, which I think is the case, I think uh, those in power have gotten so good at using their power to get what they want in a way that uh, makes it still appear as if we are in a democracy, right? Um, it is a representative democracy, not a direct democracy, of course, and the representatives have become extremely good at appearing to uh, do the will of the people while, in fact, manipulating the people towards their own ends, uh, as well as simply doing sleight of hand. Uh, that is my overall impression. I think it's borne out time after time after time, um, just by the way politics runs. Um, true democracy must have negotiation and, dare I say it, the word, compromise. Yes, you have to compromise in the commons. You don't compromise in your personal sphere, within your own heart, within your own uh, community. But our, our civilization is built on the idea that communities of differing types can get along. And that can only happen if you are capable of saying, okay, fine, we can't have everything we want. We will compromise with you in order to have a decent civilization. And we have decided not to do that. And to a certain degree, uh, the politicians can be commended because they actually do compromise sometimes. They just do it behind the scenes, right? They don't want to appear to be so weak that they would compromise. Uh, but luckily, they did at least do that every now and then. But again, it's part of the brokenness of our system that we don't realize the necessity of compromise. We think that when we win, when our sides win, uh, we have defeated the, out, the other team. And I almost think that there is some kind of a internal, um, well, that's weird. Uh, I almost think there is some, there's a sense in which, um, there's something in our DNA, in our social structure of who we are biologically that predetermines us towards, um, Sorry, there's a guy flooring it next to me for no good reason. Um, that predetermines us towards... What am I trying to say? I got distracted. Uh, towards this kind of attitude. This kind of, I will be... I will defeat you and you will be dead, right? Like, we were kind of biologically prepared for that for some reason. I think that that must be the case. Uh, because... We are used to being able to actually defeat each other. Like, there's something in our psyche that says, yes, you are defeated. We have won. Hooray. And, you know, with a football season, of course, we know that next football season it starts all over. But we will always have that year, right, of, of knowing that we won. Um, but that's not what happens with politics. We don't go, okay, you get these four years... All right. <laughs> I thought I had gotten everything out of the way, but apparently I had to get that out of the way too. That's okay. All right, so here's, here's my suggestion. If we can't control our democracy, then we hybridize the democracy by taking a more, uh, more active step into it. And we do this through contracts. Contracts which are written as if they are the government, 
government, right? Um, so you would have a standard format, something very much like a, a constitution. Um, and, you know, that basically sets out all the basic uh, contracts of humanity, like, like what it means to be human, human and interact together. Uh, things that we value, things that we should value, uh, our best model of what it means to care for each other and to exist in community, right? Um, I, work, I feel like I worked a lot of that out in some of my, my, my uh, uh, Betterment project, uh, so perhaps I'll, I'll make a rendition of that. Maybe I'll study the Constitution, too, because there's some really amazing stuff in there that, that works for everyone. Anybody can pick up the Constitution, read it, and go bam, bam, like you see what's going on there, if they take the time, right? Uh, whereas a work of philosophy that doesn't always work. So that means that the philosophy of the Constitution is very well enveloped in a rhetoric that the people can understand. So that's something I need to get good at. Anyway, um, so constitutions that are general for all of humanity, plus a statement of, or uh, I, I, I've been, I'm in contract with a constitution. Uh, and then the second order of that would be uh, the particulars, like business partners, uh, friends, and even friends and neighbors and relatives and, and people you work with. Uh, we just start building these networks of contracts that, that are hyperlinked, right? That are linked together so that if one contract breaks, you have this ripple effect amongst all the contracts. Um, and um, what that does or what that can do is take the place of the government. It basically, um, I mean, I, I can't imagine the government ever just disappearing uh, completely, uh, but it could happen. I mean, I think what would happen is it would be subsumed by this contract network eventually. And it would be minimized. It would shrink down to nothing because we have taken control, basically. We have, we have owned the process. And the contracts become um, not something that is done way, way far away, but something that is done personally in our lives. Will people try to game the contract network for their own uh, advantage? Of course, that will happen. But the way we... Uh, deal with that is we um, sorry my brain is, is, is getting frozen up uh, we, we deal with that uh, by having investigators right people who who know what a good contract looks like people we we, we contract with to be the reviewers of contracts and the securers the, the judges basically but these are like contract judges, not not uh, formal uh, elected by, by presidents and such uh, 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 judges. So election would happen uh, anytime you update or create uh, or double check your contracts. Uh, and of course, all of this could be handled by software. So, so long as the uh, the tech uh, industry can stay afloat, so long as we don't have a technology-ending event, which could happen. Uh, which is why I would suggest that we have some form of hard copy, some kind of copy that can uh, always be read. Uh, or perhaps it is simply that contracts will be kept on a device that can survive an EMP uh, in the event of, and, and can be solar charged and are long-lasted and robust. And that way... Oh, good, I got three minutes. That way, um, in the event of a civilization-ending uh, situation, we still have our contracts. They can still stay in, in effect. They can be updated. Uh, and they can be transferred to a longer-lasting medium before the devices give out. Um... And since it is a contract network, it would probably be something like blockchain. So it would be reproduced all over the place, right? When you update your contract, it just 
your contract is out there amongst many of the others and it all kind of gloms together in, in updates um, and that will also make it more secure uh, which I didn't I can't believe I didn't mention that before that yeah blockchain is very secure or whatever predecessor or not predecessor uh, descendant of blockchain becomes I don't think I've ever heard descendant used in terms like that anyway uh, so that is my suggestion that's why I brought up anarchy because we become the government the contracts that we develop between each other become the government rather than uh, a institution out there far away um, let me make sure I'm being clear uh, the contracts would include the roads. The contracts would include um, helping the poor and um, taxes, so to speak. You would you would have a fee you pay for the contract service, right? Uh, that would be distributed, uh, which you would negotiate for, right? Not a representative out there in in politics land that is manipulating your system. We do it. Um, uh, uh, law enforcement all of these things become contractual uh, when somebody says hey I want to do it this way they can create a new contract and if that contract gains where and when it gains support you know most contracts would probably become active once a n certain number of people agree to them right and then that number would would become part of that and you could have people next door that are under a different contract with you so that they're under a different um, systems jurisdiction right which will be very confusing in some ways but hey you've got the device the contract device that's hardcore and is solar powered and all that that will survive an emp and so you guys can be just like you know if, if you're a cop and you're called to a house you check your thing and it's like ah that's contract 21a okay we know we know what that procedure is we're smart people because we're well educated because <laughs> our our contract education system was far better than the state-owned uh, uh education system etc cetera, etc cetera, etc cetera. um going to war you know you would have very specific contract scenarios that allow going to war to be done according to the way the true majority of people want it done rather than how some representative and some general say it must be done. And if they betray their contract, they, they're out. They're out of a job or some other, you know, depending on how what degree of, of betrayal they have. Okay, that's, that's the idea. We can do it. Start doing it now because all we have to do is start making contracts. That's all we have to do. And as the contract system grows and we start using it instead of using government services, the government fades away to nothing or is integrated into the contract system. All right, thank you very much. Bye.